Hey, thanks for tuning in to my race recap of Run the South 10K and my shoe review for the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Don't forget runners to include your LSD, which is a like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. Enjoy. Oh, thanks buddy. All right, well, let me fix that. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is the Run the South 10K and half marathon and 5K this morning. <laughs> uh, I'm running the 10K. Um, I've got some buddies running the half marathon and some other events too. Uh, my gear, if you've been paying attention to the channel, is pretty standard, so I'll go through it pretty quickly. Reckless running singlet. Uh, I used to be a brand ambassador for reckless running, so that's why I have so many of these. But I really do think they are the uh, best and most comfortable singlets on the market. So look them up at recklessrunning.com uh, and support uh, a friend of mine, two-time Olympian Anthony Familietti. Uh, Gooder Rap G sunglasses. I like the Rap Gs because, well, they make me feel fast. Also, Gooder is one of the... Um, sponsors of this race. I think you get a pair of OG frames with the race swag. Um, since it's sunny, it's June, um, and my hair is short and thinning because I'm a 42-year-old man, I may or may not run with a hat in order to protect my scalp from sunburn, uh, but it is pretty cool today, at least, for June. Uh, just have to worry about the air quality uh, because of the Canadian wildfires. It's been... Um, making the air quality, you know, red or orange the past couple of days. I think we'll be okay. Uh, the North Face BTN split shorts, um, also very comfortable, very lightweight, and they have pockets. Uh, I shouldn't need I will have uh, one goo with me, and this is a caffeinated one, because I like to have a little bit of an energy pop before a short race, like a 10K, or even a 5K, really. That's not really for fuel, just more for uh, the pop. Um, I'm going to do my warm-up and then New Balance Fresh Foam More V4. It is just a great, comfortable, easy day shoe. Uh, I could do long runs in it, too. Uh, it's comfortable before a race and comfortable after a race. I left it up to viewers in a poll as far as which racing shoe I should wear. And the out of the five choices, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 got the most votes. In fact, it got half of the votes overall. And even though I've raced a 10K in these recently, uh, I'm gonna do it again. I think this shoe just has a large following. Also with McAlpine being a, a cross country course, finely groomed cross country course, um, nearly half of the course will be unpaved so having this substantial outsole there will be um i don't know it might work out might be a benefit um khan has kind of stolen the spotlight here and uh is looking at his paw right over my socks that's great khan so in gingy lightweight no show uh which is my standard for when i'm racing i only wear in gingy and i think once you go toe sock you never go back so that is my gear and uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready before Derek picks us up and we drive down to McAlpine. There's our ride. Morning. That's weird. All right, we're here at McAlpine. I've just done a about a 15 minute warm up run with Derek and uh, Billy. I'm gonna do another one because they're starting a half hour before me uh, doing the half marathon. That's the start line behind me right there. I'm gonna try and catch the half marathon start on video and then I'll do another warm up run just to kind of keep things loose. Um, it's a beautiful day for June, beautiful day in general. Still got some uh, fog coming up off the, uh, the pond there it is going to get a little bit warm but appropriately so i don't think the air quality is going to be a big deal um yeah looking forward to a good day of running go pacers have a good one billy oh thank you man good luck in the 10k <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. yeah. Cool. Eric, Lisa, have a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. CCMF. Always never accept less. Three, two, one. Conrad, Lynn, Pacers. <laughs> go, Eric, go, Lisa. Pace team. Go K! Yeah, come on! Light him up, light up, light him up, 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 in the different surfaces so as you may or not be able to tell it's pretty flat this course but you, what you probably won't be able to tell is there is a slight decline going out which means coming in the last mile I'll probably feel that incline a little bit but you should be feeling it by then anyway right so after some consideration I've decided I'm not gonna race with the GoPro today just because I'm shooting for a pretty fast time and I haven't had enough practice running with the GoPro to really do a best effort over this distance holding it in my hand even though it's not that heavy so I'll do a recap on my cooldown maybe see if I can join in with the end of some of the half marathoners to get some more race footage, even if it's not my own. See you after the race. How's it going? Hey guys, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? All right. Good. 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 Unintentionally matching. <laughs> well, uh, oh, you are like totally matching. Yeah, I've yeah. got the same color going on at least. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys at the start. Good luck, see you. All right, just finished the 10K about a minute ago. And uh, 37, 40 something. Go Flavio! Go Megan! Megan, finishing first female. Looks like she's doing about 39 something. Anyway, I'm running on the course to try and catch some of my friends. Here comes Smashley. Come on Smashley! Almost there! CCMF! Good job, Natalie. Still smiling. That means you need to run harder. So I'm running backwards on the course now. See if I can catch Derek. Maybe cheer him on for some of his last mile or so. It is getting warm, but still a great day for June. By the way, I finished second overall, I think, in the 10K. We'll see what the final results. Go, Lens. A lot of traffic with 10k mid pack and then lead pack half marathoners. We'll see if we can pick Derek out here at some point. Here he comes. All right. Close it in, Derek. 
Just over a half mile to go. Close it in. Derek just finished in 123 something. See if we can meet him and Ashley and Natalie maybe. A little cool down. Although I don't think we could get cool in this warm. Okay, so run the south, 10K. Um, my neighbor's out there doing some pressure washing, so it might get a little loud, but you know what? We're just gonna move on and move forward uh, with the race recap, and then we'll get to the shoe review. I'm just kind of shaking this camera around a whole bunch right now. Um, so yeah, race recap. Um, it was a 10K, obviously, at McAlpine Creek Park, uh, which is uh, a well-known and well-used uh, cross-country location, and it's a really, great groomed gravel trail, uh, the cross country part. Uh, and the first 4K of the 10K course was on that trail. Uh, there is one hill there, but the course we took avoided that hill. You would do that for the 5K if you were doing there. So we ran all the flat parts. Uh, it was scenic, good, running through the woods, good surface to run on. That was for the first 4K. Then we got onto a paved greenway um, headed south uh, for another couple of kilometers. And then uh, we turned on to another gravel trail for about a kilometer, uh, which kind of did a little lollipop till we came back to the same paved greenway trail, but heading back towards the uh, finish line, which was near the start line. So about the last 3K or so was paved and flat and straight again. Not a lot of elevation, uh, really a fast and flat race. And um, even the unpaved parts you know, I can't really complain about any kind of trail tra trail tax or anything because uh, it was a good fast surface. Um, temperature was pretty good for June, like I was saying. I think we started in the high 50s uh, Fahrenheit, uh, ended somewhere in the mid 60s. Um, I don't know, it was a little bit warmer when I started at 8 a.m. than when the half marathon started at 7.30, but really nothing to complain about for, for summer. Um, and uh, didn't really feel any effects from the air quality, which I think has been getting better towards the end of this week. So no, no complaints there. Um, I think I ran a very smart race. Uh, I lined up near the start, uh, and after the start for the first half mile or so, I was in about sixth or seventh place. Um, that gets a little bit tricky because the 5K and the 10K started together. Uh, started, you know, pulling people back to me gradually over the first couple of miles um, and uh, when I would pass them they wouldn't stick with me for long and no one ever passed me back um, I only passed a few people because there were only a few people to pass and no one passed me back um, by the time we got to uh, the paved part after four kilometers uh, I was in what I thought was third place turns out I was in second place because one of the runners uh, was doing the 5k and he did the 5k turnaround that head right back to the finish uh, so I was in second place and I was focused on not only running a good time but um, protecting that second place position uh, for as long as I could I pretty much knew I wasn't going to catch the first place runner and spoiler alert he uh, finished four minutes ahead of me uh, so there, there he was in a different league than me I'm fine with that um, but I, I maintained pretty even splits Hard to tell by the GPS because throughout the wooded sections, the GPS would go crazy. At times it would say 640, 650. At one time I looked at it, it said seven minute pace. And there was no way I was running any of those paces. I was running six minute pace above or below, right around there for the whole race. And I can verify that because at McAlpine, they have certified markers every 200 meters and for every mile. So uh, the mile markers were dead on, and all of my miles were um, six minutes plus or minus, you know, three or four seconds. Um, I remember hitting the uh, the one mile mark just under six minutes, the two mile mark just over 12 minutes, like 12:02 or something. Uh, the three mile mark in 17 high, like 17:56 or 57, um, and then everything else was pretty much. Uh, a couple seconds over that mile times times six uh, so like 24 oh something for four miles 30 oh something for five miles um, mile six was 36 10 maybe 
and here's where it stinks because while the GPS was reading short, the course was long. It was long. Um, to get from the mile six mark at 3610 to the finish line at 3746, uh, like, so that's 96 seconds to go 0.2 miles, two tenths of a mile. Uh, I think some of the people whose GPS was reading a little bit more accurately had it more of like a 6.3 plus mile course. And hey, I would rather it be long than, um, than be short. But I know that doing a 37.47 there, you know, would probably equate to a 37 low on a 10K course, or maybe even flirting with 37 flat. I wasn't running a 556 the whole time, so I can't say I did a 37 flat. But I'm happy with the time, what the, what the official results say. I'm happy with finishing second place. Um, and uh, I'm happy with just how even my splits were and qualitatively how it felt. And a lot of that does have to do with the shoes. So we're gonna get to shoe talk now. Before we go on to the shoe talk, I should add that um, in addition to me getting second overall at the 10K, um, my friend Ashley, who was there, she was on the video, got third overall for the females at the uh, 10K. And Natalie, who was also on the video, got first masters. So they deserve some props too. Derek, uh, who ran the half marathon, who you saw, uh, was sixth overall, but he was also first masters. So. Uh, we had a good showing from all of our running buddies today. Okay, on to the shoe talk. Um, like I said, the results of the poll had me running in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, um, which, like I said, this shoe has a good fan base and for good reason. When I first started running in this shoe, and here's my first pair of them, by the way. They're a little bit more eaten up in my high wear area. These have under 200 miles on them but still a good amount so that they're they're really more of a workout shoe and not a main racing shoe now there's a bit of patina on the on the white there um, but these are still relatively new I wore these that hit the bricks as well and they feel great um, going back to the reason for this shoes fan base I was talking with Derek about this shoe because he also loves this shoe and he just used this shoe uh, last month to run a uh, new marathon PR at Glass City Marathon in Toledo, Ohio of a 248. Um, this shoe has the bounce you're looking for in a Vaporfly, uh, but it has more stability than a Vaporfly does. It also has uh, what Saucony calls the speed roll geometry, which tends to work with my foot strike. It also tends to work with with Derek's as well, and he has a different foot strike than me. It just seems to roll off the forefoot really easily. Whether you're a heel striker or a heel grazer and roll through the whole gait cycle like that, or whether you're like me and lad midfoot and toe off like that, you can just feel the smoothness of it. Not necessarily a pop like you would get from a Vaporfly, but just a smoothness. Um, the Vaporfly is gonna be lighter, even holding them in hand, I can tell that these are lighter. And the upper on the Vaporfly 3 is definitely breathable like this but one thing i did not mention when i ran elm street is at the very last minute before the race started i threw a lock lace a runner's loop um not a lock lace but a runner's loop on the vapor fly just because i was feeling a little bit of um heel slip it was probably nothing but it was pr probably just in my head but that's something i've never had here one thing that the endorphin pro series has had over the Vaporfly series is fit. It just fits my foot right. And um, when I, to, to speak to that, when I was running at 10k pace, um, I was very aware the whole race of the energy return I was getting from the midsole, uh, even on the unpaved parts. What I was not aware of was the upper, and that's a good thing. This upper, very airy, you can kind of almost see me through it. Um, it's very airy, very breathable, but it's not unstable. There's just enough there to hold my foot in place where I don't even know that the upper is there. I am just interacting with that really bouncy midsole and the carving plate inside. Um, I talked about the substantial outsole. I'm going to say though that despite having a great outsole, the rubber 
on this shoe is not as tacky as something like you would get on, you know, the A6 Metaspeed Edge, which was, you know, my second choice for this race. Actually, I probably would have preferred to take this, but, you know, I did what the poll said. Um, also, the Hoka Rocket X2, I think, has a little bit more grip on this outsole, even though it's a, a flatter outsole and there's a little bit less of it. These shoes, very comparable. I would say this shoe has the same density of foam throughout, if you're really looking for that same energy return. Uh, this shoe, I think, like I said when I ran Tar Heel 10 miler, very soft in the midfoot to rear foot, and then that softness kind of tapers into a firm response at the forefoot. Uh, what would come with me choosing between these shoes would probably depend on the day. And with this being not too hot for June, but still being June, so hot, this upper would probably have worked better than this one. Even though I'm still not sure which one of these I would choose over the other. And this is, of course, also in the mix, you know, when we're talking about a fall marathon shoe. Um, I can't discount this one yet. Um, this one I know will work. It's just whether I'm going to figure out what will work better on race day for a marathon. Uh, I should note that um, before with Endorphin Pro Series, I've thought of them as decent marathon racers, good for a half marathon, and you know once you get under the 10 mile distance um, that they don't do as well at that hard pace. But even though this is a thicker midsole, um, it's actually lighter than previous versions. I think I could just be talking out of my butt. Um, it does really well at 10K, having raced a couple of 10Ks in them. When I came off of the gravel and back onto the paved section with about 3K to go, and I had a straight paved greenway in front of me, I was rolling if my watch is to be believed, you know, 550 pace, 555 pace. Uh, it's keeping it sub six on that straight. And part of that was, you know, kind of squeezing down the trigger and finishing the race hard, but I didn't feel like I was fighting against it. I feel like these were natural at that pace. So as far as versatility, as far as being able to handle the distance and being able to um, be comfortable the whole time, there's not a lot negative, I have to say, about the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. Um, it's also cheaper than either of these or than the A6 Metaspeed Edge Plus or Sky Plus. Um, and Saucony has been having a lot of sales recently, or so, some of the main big online retailers have as well, as well as some of the brick and mortar retailers that offer online shopping. Uh, I'll throw a plug to the Running Lab in Brighton, Michigan. I've never lived there, never lived in Michigan, but I've gotten shoes from them before and they've always had some really good sales. Um, they ship promptly. Uh, I did get a pair of these from the Running Lab actually. Um, and it was a deep discount. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll throw some business their way. But that is my shoe talk about the Saucony Endorphin, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Endorphin Pro three uh good for a 10k good for a half good for a marathon um i don't know if i would race a 5k in it but um it certainly would probably do fine with a 5k and good for uh multiple surfaces paved unpaved uh might not choose it for the most wet surfaces but other than that um i've got to endorse it and uh it's making my decisions for my Chicago Marathon shoe much more difficult. So thank you for sticking around, listening to my shoe talk and my race recap. And don't forget, runners, uh, to include your LSD, which is like, subscribe, and uh, ding the bell for notifications. Um, throw a comment down there about what you think about this shoe or some of the shoes I've compared it to, um, or about you know, just some races that you're looking forward to and shoe choices that you're, you're, you have for those races. And thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next one.